You've just seen a bird's eye view of Ball State's beautiful campus. Now we'd like to give you a closer look at what your alma mater looks like today. I'm Tom Kinghorn and currently I am Ball State University's Vice President for Business Affairs and Treasurer. But 26 years ago I was a Ball State freshman majoring in business. I've seen a lot of changes over the years. Enrollment though between 1970 and today has remained steady at 18,000 students and we expect it to remain that way to the end of the decade. But in the same period, $100 million will have been invested in the physical plant. You might ask, why all the new facilities for the same size student enrollment? The answer is that our programs have evolved, and so have our facilities. The curriculum has broadened from a single-purpose teacher education institution to a comprehensive university and a campus that reflects that evolution. You no doubt remember the original quadrangle with the administration building, Lucina Hall, the Ball Gym, the Fine Arts Building, North Quad, just to name a few. Then north of that are Teachers College and Emmons Auditorium. They form the gateway for a newly developing academic quadrangle. Here we find new buildings that are having an important impact on the quality of our academic programs. And for example, at one time, the College of Architecture was located in five buildings spread across the campus. When it was consolidated into a single facility in 1984, each student was given an individual workstation and the quality of instruction was improved significantly. Our College of Business is now the largest undergraduate school of business in the state of Indiana. Plus, it's one of only 200 business schools in the nation accredited by the American Assembly of Collegiate Schools of Business. Housed in the Whitinger Building, the business program accounts for more than 25% of the total campus enrollment. Already 10 years old, Bracken Library has study space for 3,500 students and holds more than one million volumes. It is three times larger than the old library was. A computerized catalog was installed this year. And speaking of computers, there are at least 2,000 microcomputers available for instructional purposes on the campus. In addition, in 1985, the Robert P. Bell Building was completed. That's where our central computer facility for research and administrative purposes is located. The computing power of the mainframe is also accessible from computer terminals across the campus. Also related to computers and the access to them, we are now in the process of installing a fiber optic network that will link our entire campus together for voice, data, and video transmission. Our faculty will be able to use live as well as taped video material and regular classroom instruction. Imagine Lee Iacocca responding to students' questions in a business class, for example, or Itzhak Perlman explaining his technique to a music class. Soon all of our classrooms will be capable of utilizing such technology. This brings you up to date on what has already happened. Now let's take a look at some ideas for the future. Our comprehensive master plan extends through the year 2000. But I want to focus on two projects that are part of our immediate future. Under construction is the Edmund F. Ball Building. It will house the university's public radio and television stations, media services, and the new Center for Information and Communication Sciences, and the Telecommunications Department, which is one of the largest on the campus with more than 600 majors. The building will feature two state-of-the-art electronic classrooms that will be used to broadcast interactive television throughout the state. Currently, for example, courses for the MBA program are offered in 37 locations around the state. Classes are received there simultaneously with a class that is being taught in Muncie. Students in all the locations are able to participate in the discussion. The delivery of instruction by interactive television is an educational tool that reaches a market that is presently underserved. Facilities in the Ball Building will increase our capacity to deliver these televised education courses to hundreds of Ball State constituents. The second project I want to tell you about is a new health and physical activity complex. By any chance, do you remember the Field Sports Building? How about the Llewellyn Pool? Or going to a basketball game at University Gym? These three facilities are going to be incorporated into a new health and physical activity complex. The construction that needs to be added is estimated to cost 
$25.1 million. We plan to begin construction on this facility in the fall of 1988. When completed, the complex will house the men's and women's physical education departments, the internationally recognized human performance laboratory, and the new wellness management program. The intercollegiate athletic section of this facility will include a 12,000 seat arena for basketball and other major assembly events. The legislature has approved $16.9 million for the academic and research portion. The remaining $8.2 million to support the arena is to be raised by donations from alumni and friends. This is a major fundraising project for Ball State, but we are confident this goal can be achieved. As you have seen, major improvements have been made on the campus in the last 20 years, and still more are planned. You've just seen a sample of what we envision between now and the year 2000. The next decade is going to be an exciting one at Ball State. Just as we've enjoyed visiting with you, we urge you to come and visit your alma mater and to get a taste of the atmosphere of excitement and progress that is Ball State today. Warren Vanderhill, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at Ball State. I've been at Ball State for 20 years as a history professor and head of the Honors College. I've seen many changes at Ball State, but our facilities and buildings are excellent, and we can be very proud of the way Ball State looks today. We're also very proud of some of the new academic programs that are underway or about to start, all designed to meet our most important goal to enhance the educational experience available to our students. In the next few minutes, you'll be meeting people who are responsible for some of the new programs and hearing from me about others. Studies have shown that there is a high correlation between good academic advising and students staying in school. Therefore, this past autumn, we began a new academic advising program. Dr. Michael Haynes, the Director of Advising, will share some of the highlights of that program. The new advising program, a major advancement in our ability to serve students effectively, is a two-pronged approach. Freshmen are advised by full-time advisors who help with scheduling, major selection, study skills, and academic performance. When the student has completed the freshman year and chosen a major, he or she is assigned to a faculty member in that major. Faculty advisors provide specialized information about the discipline and act as models for the students. Each advisor has a computer and can use the degree audit program to track the student's progress toward graduation. The new advising system requires a high level of student responsibility, but it is designed to promote successful adjustment to college. Another program to help students adjust to college is the Learning Center. Dr. Barbara Weaver is the director of that center. The Learning Center in University College offers peer tutoring, course review sessions, and state-of-the-art computer labs to help students excel academically. The Learning Center staff work with students who want to improve their performance in reading, writing, mathematics, and other general studies courses. We help students develop the thinking habits and study skills that make their coursework more productive. It's interesting that many students who use the Learning Center are academically strong students who want to become even better. Another new program designed to accomplish Ball State's goal of enhancing the educational experience is the Center for Teaching and Learning, which works with the faculty. Here to describe this program is the Center's director, Dr. Linda Annis. Excellent faculty are essential because they determine the quality of the undergraduate educational experience. Ball State Center for Teaching and Learning, now in its second year, conducts a series of faculty lectures and discussion meetings dealing with good teaching practices. Another program entitled Partners in Teaching Improvement pairs up faculty to help each other become better teachers. They attend each other's classes and offer constructive criticism. A third program is the Teaching Improvement Program. Faculty are trained to assist other faculty through discussions about good teaching, analyzing student evaluations, and videotapes of the professor in the classroom, as well as planning strategies for teaching improvement. 
Another of our new centers is our Academic Assessment Center. It has been established to help faculty determine how well students and our academic programs are faring. The center will help us to be accountable for students' learning. There are a number of tests that will be given to these students and they will be given as the students progress from the freshman through the senior year. By testing students at different points in their careers, we can determine what value is added to the students, what they are learning, how quickly they are learning, and what needs to be done to help them learn more. Also starting this year, all students must pass a writing competency examination. Students in their junior year are required to write on a topic that draws upon their total educational experience. The papers are graded on organization, development, and support of ideas. If students do not pass the examination, they are required to enroll in an additional writing course and are coached while developing a portfolio of their written work. They must then successfully complete this course. In addition to demonstrating the ability to write, all students will be required to be computer competent. Students must be able to use the computer as a tool to solve real problems in their major fields of study, not just to do word processing or simple programming. Faculty are accomplishing this goal by requiring students to use the computer to complete certain courses in the academic major. The General Assembly has graciously provided funds for state-of-the-art computer equipment and training to assist the faculty to become computer competent. The internship program is another way we are enhancing our students' education. Janine Harold, Director of Career Services, will explain. We encourage all of our students to participate in important out-of-classroom activities. In addition to the theory that they learn related to their discipline in the classroom, they get practical experience and nobody can beat that. Last year, more than 400 students participated in some type of paid experiential education, like an internship or a co-op activity. We find they come back to campus more enthusiastic and more directed towards their studies. The employers also have a chance to find out what Ball State University is really like and often end up hiring our participants. Life in the contemporary world requires sensitivity to other cultures and Ball State is working to internationalize the entire university. This year, 199 Ball State University students studied abroad and 389 foreign students came here to our campus. 24 faculty taught courses while 30 scholars from international institutions came here to teach. The university also works with city and state officials on international exchanges of business and government personnel. Another important new thrust is the use of telecommunications technology to improve teaching. In partnership with AT&T, Ball State is installing a fiber optic communication network to transmit voice, data, and most importantly, video to academic buildings. This system, one of the most sophisticated in the entire country, will permit faculty to increase their use of visual images in the classroom. The goal is to make telecommunications technology as convenient as the, as the computer has become. The university is also extending classroom instruction beyond the campus through interactive TV courses. Courses are taught live on the campus and students at off-campus sites can ask and answer questions, participating as if they were attending class on our campus. For example, the College of Business is teaching MBA courses and simultaneously sending them to 35 sites throughout the state of Indiana. In September 1988, the new Edmund F. Ball Building will open providing students and faculty with state-of-the-art telecommunications facilities and equipment. These are some of the exciting new programs which are currently being developed at Ball State. But the university is not just initiating new programs. We continue to evaluate and strengthen the 125 academic programs already in place. Ball State's top priority for the next decade is to provide the best educational experience for its 18,000 students. To accomplish our educational goals, we need your understanding and support. We welcome your comments, your questions, and your continued interest in Ball State University.